I'm going to start by creating a canvas. I'm going to choose 16 inches by 16 inches with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. That'll give me a pretty good sized square canvas to work with. Next, I'm going to turn on perspective guides and I want to be using two point perspective and I'll go ahead and just use the standard two point preset. If you're not seeing the guides, make sure the on button is turned on. You'll also want to make sure perspective guided strokes is turned on. Now I'm going to choose the detail oils brush and a dark gray color. And when I draw, if perspective guided strokes is enabled, it's going to lock my strokes into those vanishing points there. So I won't be able to paint any lines that aren't going into the vanishing point. That is, unless I hold shift and then I can draw freeform. But what I want to do here is just kind of randomly put in a whole bunch of lines. I know that these lines are going to be in perspective, so I don't have to worry about the angle of them. I'll just kind of worry about the placement and I can determine where I want the most concentration of lines to be, where I want my positive and negative space, and really just thinking about how I want this to look. Now, this doesn't need to be objective. This doesn't need to represent anything. There doesn't need to be any reason why I'm making any of these lines. I can just put them in spontaneously however I like, and I'm really just moving my hand around, just dancing it around the canvas. If I start to see an area that I want to build up, I'll build up that area and just let the piece come together organically. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and hide my guides. I can do that up at the top in the properties bar, or I can use my custom keyboard shortcut that I created and just hit P to toggle the lines off. And I want to keep perspective guided strokes still active. I just don't want to be able to see the lines because at this point they're kind of interfering with what I'm seeing. So I'm assessing the situation here, determining whether or not I like this. And I think I do like it. So I'm going to go ahead and dim the opacity of that layer. I'm going to create a new layer on top of it. And let's just go ahead and tidy up and name our layers here. That bottom layer is the sketch and the top layer is going to be the lines. So the sketch just kind of helped me plot out where I wanted the lines. I could draw it more spontaneously with that brush because I didn't have to worry about how it looked. But now I want these lines to be cleaner, and so I'm going to draw them in more carefully using the smooth scratchboard tool, or you could just use the regular scratchboard tool. You want to size your brush about the size of the line that you want, and just draw them in. I might kind of have a few variations in the line and have them get thicker and thinner, but I want to draw in some just very nice, clean lines. I can decide which lines I want to keep and which lines I want to get rid of, but overall I just wanted to have a nice, consistent, clean look. So I'm just going to go through here and draw these in. I'll speed this up a bit so you don't have to watch me do this for a long time. But you can really just kind of do this however you want. One thing I do want to mention is that if you want these lines to be white, go ahead and fill your canvas with black first and then draw your lines in white because it's going to be hard to change black lines to white later on if you want to change the color of the lines. Now it's time to switch to the eraser and go ahead and clean up some of these stray edges. Now again, this is up to you to decide what's right and what's wrong here. I mean, there is no right and wrong in abstract art, but everybody kind of has a certain logic or a certain reasoning when they're making things, when they make these decisions to make a line a certain width or make a line a certain length. That's a decision. And so while you can say it's non-objective and people are just making it, there is some intention involved. So go through and just decide what you like and what you don't. If it feels like it's a weird, you know, like a stray hair or just a little piece of dirt or dust that you don't like, clean it out of there, take it away, and clean this up and make it look the way you want it to look. In some places I'm going to join lines with lines that are out of perspective. I'm going to use straight line drawing mode for that. You can switch to that with V on your keyboard. I'm going to make my brush smaller so that the line is more consistent with the line that's there, and I'm just going to go back and forth and clean it up. If I need to draw with freeform mode, I'll do that to clean up edges because sometimes that's easier. You want to make sure you turn off perspective guided strokes so that you can draw freeform lines again. I'm just zooming out to take a look at this. I'm going to be going back and forth, hunting around, going from spot to spot and either erasing more lines or connecting more lines and really just, again, making this look the way I want it to look. It's really the interesting thing about abstract art is how you can work on something like this that really isn't something that you can compare to something in real life and then go, okay, it's done or it's not done. Now one thing you need to worry about here is when you're switching between straight line drawing mode with V and your eraser with N on your keyboard, sometimes your eraser gets locked into straight line erasing, which is not what you want it to do. So in that case, you have to switch back to freeform drawing with B and then go back to your eraser with N. That does get a little confusing. Fortunately, if you have a Wacom pen that has an eraser on the other end, it might be easier just to flip over your pen and use the eraser so you don't have that issue. I might add in a few lines here and there as well. 
I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the footage. I spent about 15 minutes on this, but I'm gonna, you're gonna see me do it much quicker here. But really just take the time to make this look the way you want it. Make sure that you're happy with it and don't rush through it. Once you're done with the lines, we can go ahead and add a new layer for a border. I'm gonna create that at the top of the layers palette. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that layer with white. And then I'm gonna to go to select all, and then select convert to shape. That'll convert that white layer to a shape. Then I'm gonna go and click over to the left of that shape layer, double click. And then I'm going to turn on a stroke and turn off the fill. I want that stroke to be whatever color I want my border to be. In this case, I want that to be the exact same color as the lines that I chose. I'm gonna increase the width and click OK. The width doesn't necessarily have to match the width of your lines, but I'm gonna make mine pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that extra layer there. We don't need that anymore. I'm gonna rename that shape layer border. I'm gonna hold shift and select both layers and then merge them with control E into a single layer. Now I'm gonna name that layer lines again and that merges that border with the lines. I'm gonna right click on the lines layer and duplicate it and name that layer fills, put that below the lines. And this is the layer that we'll use to fill. I'm gonna to go to color.adobe.com and I'm gonna pick out a nice color scheme here. I can use my central color to pick a base color and this will give me a color harmony here. Right now it's set to analogous, but I'm gonna set it to something more complex like compound. And once you have a color scheme that you like, go ahead and do a screen capture of that and save it as a PNG. And then we'll go ahead and load that into Corel Painter using the reference image palette, which is found under window, reference image. We'll go ahead and click on the load button down in the bottom left. We'll choose that PNG. Now we have our palette that we can choose colors from. Feel free to go ahead and resize this and position it wherever you want. I'm gonna move it over here out of the way. If you click on the dropper icon, then you can click on any of the colors to sample them. And that'll make it really easy to get our base colors. And I'm gonna to go to the paint bucket and I'm going to click inside of each of these cells and I'm going to fill them with a color. I'm gonna use each of these five colors in my color scheme as the base color. And then I'm going to vary that color by changing the saturation and value to get a different color that's just slightly different. That'll create kind of an interesting stained glass effect. And I think it looks pretty cool like this. So I'm gonna keep going with that theme, choosing lighter and darker and more saturated and less saturated colors. I'm gonna fill in each corner with a particular base color here. So this particular corner in the top right is gonna be this particular blue. And then I'll fill all the other corners with different colors. For example, I'm gonna select this blue gray color here and I'll put in a little patch of that over here on the right. Then I'll select this deeper blue and I'll put in some of that in the bottom right corner. I'll pick this salmon color, put it over here on the left, and then take the bright red and put it in the top left corner. So I'm gonna continue following that theme, choosing different colors here, but keeping each of the base colors in their respective corner. Now, as the colors start to get closer to each other, I want them to start to mix together. So I wanna leave a little bit of space between some of the colors, but I wanna get most of it filled in as much as I can. So I think that looks pretty good for now. Now what I wanna do is I wanna to start to kind of fuse some of these colors together or blend them together where they start to join up. So I'm gonna select the dropper tool. I'm gonna to choose sample size 101 average, and then I'm going to sample right in between two colors. That should give me an average of those two colors together. Once I have that average, I'll go ahead and just fill in the in-between cells using that as the base color and picking lighter and darker colors from that. So I'm continuing that same theme. Now. Incidentally, you're gonna get some areas that kind of flow into other areas and overlap a little bit. And at this point, just use your imagination, just fill it in however it makes sense to you. I mean, there is no right or wrong here, as I've said many times before in this video, just make it look appealing to you. And if it looks good to you, chances are it might look good to everybody else who looks at it. If you don't like something you did, do an undo and try a different color. And sometimes you have to see what you don't like to know what you do like. But again, I'm averaging those colors, sampling in between the two colors, and then using that average to fill in the middle. Now, for some reason, it really bothers me if two of the same color are touching each other, or even two colors that are too similar to each other. So here and there, you're gonna see me change a color because I might decide that it's too similar to the colors surrounding it, and so I might make it much lighter or much darker, but really I want there to be a lot of variety here. And feel free to bend your rules and even break them because if you wanted to, you could add in a completely different color if you wanted to. But I do wanna to try to keep it within this color palette. So I'm gonna stick with these base colors and then the mixtures of them together. And it doesn't hurt to put in a little bit of gray here and there or even some almost grays because gray up next to that bright color really helps the gray stand out. It also helps the color stand out. 
Now, if you watch the warm-up video that's about the seven elements of art, you'll know that we've used line, we're using color, we've used value a lot here, we've used space to compose our piece, and we've used shape, and we're also creating form in a sense by using these different values and colors and geometric shapes. It almost starts to look kind of three-dimensional, like a building or a city or something like that. It's really pretty interesting. The only element that's missing here is texture. So now we can go ahead and change the color of the lines a little bit to make this more interesting. Overall, I'm going to keep them pretty dark, and as I mentioned earlier, hopefully if you wanted white lines, you made them white instead of black. I'm going to turn on Preserve Transparency on the lines layer and use the airbrush to go ahead and paint over those lines. But I want to use kind of light pressure so I don't overpaint them. I'm selecting colors from each of those corners, so in the top left I'm using the red, in the top right I'm using the blue, and in the bottom left I'm using the orange, so that those lines are still pretty dark, but they have a little bit of flavor from each of their respective corners. And just like all of the little individual cells that we filled in, the colors start to kind of blend and fade together very naturally. And I think this gives it a really nice, really unique touch. Now, depending on the colors you choose for your lines and for your fills, you may want to play with the composite method too. I think screen looks pretty good in this case, so I'm going to set it to screen because that blends a little bit better with the background. So now we're at the point that I like to call save and experiment. I'm going to save a copy of my work and I'm going to experiment to try to get this looking like a finished piece. For example, I'll flip my canvas in different directions. You kind of get sick of looking at the piece after you work on it for so long and flipping it kind of helps it look fresh, so that's why I do that. It might also look better flipped one direction or another. You can also rotate it if you want to rotate it a particular direction. I think that looks kind of cool and almost makes it look like you're on top of a building looking down or flying over a city in an airplane. I'm going to choose Save As again to save another copy, just because I want to experiment a bit more. I'm going to go to Layers, Drop All. That'll flatten all my layers down into a single layer, and that'll make it easy to go to Effects, Adjust Color, and then I can adjust the color of the lines and the fills together. Now I can go ahead and just reset this, and then play with the hue if I want to to get a whole different look here. But it keeps everything still within a color harmony, it's just moving to a particular base color instead of what it was at before. I kind of like that blue and yellow combination. I might desaturate it a bit. You could even play with the value if you want it to be lighter or darker. But I think something like that looks kind of cool. Now it really looks like an old aerial view of something when you're flying in an airplane or something like that. Maybe it's like a farm merging into a city or something. So I really like that. I'm going to go ahead and save that as my final copy, and I'm going to call this a finished piece.